So once you've completely and correctly signed your bundle, uh, your software, you have to make sure that you don't invalidate your signature. That means you should never be changing files in your bundle except during installation or update. And when you update, make sure that what is the result of that update is correctly in, in, signed and notarized on your customer system. So now we're going to dig deeper into the hardened runtime. We introduced the hardened runtime last year at WWDC, and now we're going to give a bit more detail to discuss its benefits and uh, configuration. So the hardened runtime uh, extends many of the system integrity protections uh, that we have on Mac OS to your app. This means runtime code signing enforcement, library validation, DYLD environment variable protection, and debugging protection. And note that all of these uh, protections are on by default and not configurable on iOS, but on macOS, they are configurable via entitlements that any developer can set. So if you're using Xcode, adopting the hardened runtime is easy. Just go to the signing and capabilities tab and make sure that the hardened runtime capability is present on your target. Then you can select which entitlements you need to configure your, the hardened runtime on your project using the checkboxes provided. If you're using a custom workflow outside Xcode, you can use the code sign command to adopt the hardened runtime. And to do that, use the option runtime command to code sign. And make sure you use the, the timestamp option as well to ensure that there is a secure timestamp on your application. To verify that you have adopted the hardened runtime correctly, use the display option to code sign with a verbosity level of two, and look for the runtime word in the flag section. Also note that the hardened runtime is versioned. Uh, when you sign with the hardened runtime, we record what version you were signing with so that when, or if we were to add additional protections to hardened runtime in the future, we'll ensure that only the ones that your app has been tested with get applied on future systems. So what is runtime code signing enforcement? It prevents creation of executable memory without an associated code signature within your process. And it does this by ensuring first that all bytes mapped into your process match their associated code signature when they're read from disk. And this includes not just executable regions of your Mako, but also the non-executable mappings like your read-only sections. And we prevent execution from modified memory that doesn't match its signature. So by verifying that the memory is, or the memory that we're reading from disk is correct as it's coming in and making sure that we can't change it, we ensure the integrity of your process as it's running. Now, one of the challenges that can come up with working with the runtime code signing enforcement is if your code uses JIT to make non-native code run fast within your app. To do this, we recommend that you use the allow JIT entitlement and then use the map JIT flag when allocating your read write execute memory that you're compiling the, the JIT code into. This allows us to keep the rest of the protections on all of your other memory within the system while giving you this uh, scratch space memory to do what you need uh, with respect to JIT. If you can't adopt the, the map JIT flag because you don't have source code access to your JIT engine, you can use the allow unsigned executable memory entitlement. This will lower the security protections provided by runtime code signing enforcement to just verifying that for every piece of memory that does have a code signature uh, associated, all of the bytes that you read from disk are in fact match that. But it allows modification to any of the, your, your memory inside your process and allows the creation of uh, un unsigned executable regions. Another thing that we've seen some developers having challenges with is if they uh, attempt to patch uh, some system frameworks that they've loaded in after they have adopted the hardened runtime. We don't recommend that you do this, and you should see whether any of the hardened runtime features actually make the, solve the reasons why you're doing this. But if you need to, the allow unsigned executable memory entitlement will do what you need to allow you to modify the, those memory pages that you've mapped in. So another thing that we've seen come up with respect to run sign code signing enforcement is some people have seen crashes while they're updating their app. Now, this is because code signatures are latched to files on first use in the kernel. And that means if you 
modify a file that has been run and was signed, then it will no longer match the signature that's sitting in the kernel, and you'll see a code signature violation. What we recommend instead is that instead of modifying existing files on disk, you always uh, create a new file with the updated changes and move the old file out of the way. This will ensure that the new file on its first use gets its code signature uh, without causing the code signature violations that you're seeing. So next we'll talk about library validation. So library validation protects your app from code injection and dialib hijacking by making sure that your app only loads code signed by your team or signed by Apple. And some of you might ask, why does it need to load code signed by Apple? Well, remember that all of the frameworks and libraries that you're loading from the operating system are Apple signed, so you have to be able to call those and uh, load them into your process. Note, though, that library validation uh, prevents the loading of unsigned and ad hoc signed code. So be careful during your development process. Make sure that you use Apple development certificates rather than turning off code signing or uh, just using ad hoc signing. So library validation can cause challenges for uh, apps that have an in-process plugin ecosystem. We recommend that you consider moving to an out-of-process plugin model so that you don't have to load unknown third-party code into your app. But if you can't, you can use the disable library validation entitlement. And this will allow loading of unsigned and ad hoc signed plugins. And note, you can take this by itself without taking any of the runtime code and sort enforcement related entitlements by having disable library validation on when the system sees that you're loading a ad hoc signed or an unsigned plugin, it will lower the security of, of your process to allow that because you've said you want to load uh, unsigned plugins. So next is DYLD environment variable protection. DYLD environment variables can be very useful during your development process to load debug libraries into your app while you're testing or to use libraries that are or frameworks that you're building that are in development but aren't quite ready to be built into your app just to test them. Uh, but they can be dangerous because everything that you can do during your building and testing process, an attacker can do on a customer system uh, to take advantage of privileges or data that's available to your app. So because of this, the hardened runtime blocks these variables by default when you ship with it. If you use, need to use DYLD environment variables during your debugging process, you can use the get task allow entitlement on your debug build. And note that Xcode automatically puts this on for you when you build for debug and takes it off for you automatically when you build for release. Note, though, that if you're using a custom workflow, the notary service, in most cases, doesn't accept binaries with the get task allow entitlement. So make sure you take this entitlement off uh, before you ship your release build to the notary service. So in a few cases, we have seen the do that uh, developers needed to use the DYLD environment variables when they ship their app to customers. And again, we don't recommend that you do this. This can be very dangerous for um, taking advantage of your app on customer systems. But if you need to, there is an entitlement for the uh, allow DYLD environment variables, which will allow these to be used and is accepted by the notary service. Next is debugging protection. So we all know that debuggers allow developers to inspect the state of registers and memory and modify process memory. But that means they allow attackers to <laughs> steal sensitive user data and inject malicious code. So by default, the hardened runtime doesn't allow debugging of hardened processes. But if you need to use the debugger during your development flow, again, the get task allow entitlement is what you need. The, along with DYLD environment variables, the get task allow entitlement allows your app to be debugged. But be careful. If you do all of your testing with a debugger attached, this will mask some of the other hardened runtime-related issues that you could run into, especially around runtime code signing enforcement. Basically, once the debugger attaches, we can't enforce code signing enforcement anymore because debuggers like setting a breakpoint automatically change your data <laughs> within your process, and they would just crash immediately if we were to continue to enforce that. So make sure you test a release build to see what other effects the runtime code signing enforcement might have. Uh, and then if you need to make a debug build without get task allow through Xcode, you can use the code sign 
inject base entitlements equals no option in your Xcode project to get all of your debug settings except get test allow.